Guten Morgen, guten Tag, guten Abend. We will together look at precipitation data from Google Earth Engine. We will be using TRMM data. This stands for Tropical Rainfall Measuring Mission data available on Google Earth Engine. We will turn the three hourly into average daily over the month. We will use a similar product called TRMM 3B43 that gives monthly precipitation estimates. Using the first link provided below in the video description, we'll take you to this script. If we push run, right now we're looking at precipitation averaged over the Danube Basin in Europe. The script is generating the millimeters per day, the average millimeters per day of precipitation for the period available. Let's open this up. So the script is finished running. Let's use this pop-out window. So we see from around 1998 all the way to 2012 or uh, midway through 2011, the millimeters per day average over the Danube Basin. If we push on the second script link below, it'll take us here. Perhaps this is more interesting. It'll give us the monthly average millimeter per day for the area of interest for the time series. If I push run, again, right away, the region that's going to be download downloaded right away is the Danube Basin. Uh, the script is finished running. We do the pop-out window. The pop-out window is nice because we can download uh, the CSV, which allows us to open it up in Excel and do whatever analysis or further figures we're interested in. So this is the millimeter per day average precipitation, that's rainfall and snowfall or liquid and solid precipitation from 1998 to, uh, in this case, all the way up to 2019. So they have different dates of availability. This previous one, when we're looking at the daily, the three hourly turned into daily, uh, 1998 to 2012, and the monthly, we're going from about, yeah, also 1998 to 2020. Now you may be interested in doing it for a region other than the Danube Basin. What you require is a shape file. I will demonstrate this for the country of China. So I have come to this world countries from ArcGIS. I'll also include this link in the video description. Then using ArcMap, I turned the country of China specifically into a shapefile, and I will upload this now. So going again, let's just do this for the monthly. Let's go into Assets, and I'm going to upload the China shapefile that I have created. So I'll go to New, Shapefiles, Select, I'm looking for the four files. Let's view this as a list. And sort by date. Okay. Okay, I'm looking for the files. I sort of want of even different uh, details. Uh, this is perfect, just what I want. Okay, I'm looking for the DBF file the SHP file, the SHX file, and the PRJ file. I'm going to upload these four, and I'll call the asset name China. We see in tasks, we'll see that it's uploading. Oh, already uploaded. That's fast. Hmm. No, it's uploading now. So again, the first link is providing a daily average millimeter per day, and the second link is allowing us to look at monthly average millimeter per day.
Okay. Clicking on our new asset, I can go view asset. We see here the country of China. Let me just edit this and I can make it shareable. Derived from Okay. So anyone can read. I'll also include the link to this China asset in the video description. Okay, so we got view asset. And now let's go import. We can click import here. Or we can go into assets again here. So let's go back to assets. China isn't yet here, but let me push the refresh button. And then it's here. All right, so I'll click China. Yeah, it takes me here and then we push import. Now what we have to do here when you put your own region in is delete the old one. See, it was called region. Delete this. And the imported one is called automatically table. Let's rename this to region, R-E-G-I-O-N, and click anywhere. Now let's run the script. I am in the second script that's showing us the monthly average millimeter per day. This will also work in the daily. Let's go to console. It's generating the chart. Something interesting about the first daily it only allows us to see uh, 5,000 points in the time series. So we're actually, you see here, it's limiting the data to just um, the first available day to uh, 5,000 time steps after that. For the monthly, uh, okay, great. Actually, because this looks so different than the Danube, I'm going to, okay, let's, I want to compare the Danube and China. Close these links. Oh good, I have the Danube still open. So let's pop this out as well. So this is the rainfall monthly average millimeter per day average across China. And this is the graph for the average monthly millimeter per day precipitation for the Danube Basin. The China looks like it has a much, much more regular pattern or annual seasonality. While the Danube Basin both looks like it has patterns of seasonality well beyond annual. Uh, from other videos we've discussed looking at the gray satellites uh, and the total water storage and precipitation and discharge for the Danube Basin that we're observing at something like a decadal seasonality. That's also available here when we're looking at the precipitation, but it also looks like there aren't as clearly defined wet and dry seasons when in China this is strikingly clear. Uh, that's all for today. Thanks. Till next time.